Hey, welcome back. So recently, Llama.cpp has released their brand new web UI, which is absolutely gorgeous. It's built in Svelte, and it's a real complement to the backend engine, Llama.cpp. Now, if you've never used Llama.cpp before, it is basically an LLM inference engine, which powers stuff like LM Studio, and it also powers Olama, although they are moving away from that for the latest models. So one of the things I realized as I was playing with the new UI, it is hugely faster than Olama. So in this video, I'm going to show you how to get started with the Llama.cpp web UI. We are then going to compare it to Olama, and we're even going to do a performance benchmark. And I'm going to show you how, certainly on backend APIs, how you can actually use Llama.cpp with the models running on Olama locally. Now to get started with Llama.cpp, it's actually really quite simple. The instructions are in their GitHub. Um, now because I'm running a Mac, I just did a brew install Llama.cpp and then that gets it installed on your machine. Once you have got that installed, you are gonna want to start up a server. So one of the nice things about Llama CPP, it has a built-in OpenAI compliant web server. So in this particular case, if you notice here to run that, I'm just going to type in llama-server and then minus hf which stands for hugging face. So I'm going to download a model from hugging face. So in this case we're going to use the GPT OS 20B. So if I were to go to uh, huggingface.co.uk and then I put in that URL you can see there is the model and therefore any models that I exist in that org, you're gonna be able to download that. Now you can convert models to GGUF format from Hugging Face, there is a converter built in, but it's fairly easy to get started with what you want. I'm gonna put in minus minus ginger, and the reason I'm gonna do that is I wanna be able to use things like tools, and then you can see here, I'm gonna pass in the host, which is gonna be local host, and I'm gonna get it started on port 8033. So if I run that, now this is probably the big difference between Llama CPP and Old Llama. As you can see, looking at all this is quite technical, and therefore, if you are just a user who wants to use models, it's probably a little bit much uh, for an experience compared to how you would start things with Olama. However, once that is running, we can just open up localhost 8033, and there is the interface, and then we can talk with it. Now, if I say something like, tell me a joke about uh, cheese, um, you are gonna see there, uh, it comes back, and it was fast. That is probably the thing I want you to really notice, and this was the experience I had when I used it for the first time. Notice how fast that is, and you can see it's running at 88 tokens per second, which you know, which is a beautiful uh, Back to the Future reference there. Now, if I say something longer, so say write me a long story about cheese, we have got cheese on the brain today. Again, it's gonna do some reasoning, we're using GPT-OSS, but look at the speed it's coming back. And, and I felt when I was using this, um, it was running a lot faster than using Olama. And again, we're gonna benchmark that a little bit later on, but that is 88, 90 tokens per second is really the speed that I want. And this is uh, all running from the uh, GPT OSS, a 20 billion parameter model. Now the UI is pretty cool. Um, if I click on new chat, for example, um, I can actually uh, chat with things like PDF files. So if I, uh, maybe if I pick the, uh, the, the PDF, which was the uh, Thinking Machines paper on defeating non-determinism, and I'll just say summarize this paper, um, uh, you're gonna see it's gonna go and ingest that PDF, uh, load it into the context, and then uh, it's gonna summarize the PDF. So there you go, it's coming back there. I can, if you wanna see the reasoning, of course, the reasoning is in there, the user wants a summary of the paper, blah, blah, blah. And there you go, it's speeding across and it's having to look at that PDF. So this is a really nice starter um, uh, interface. And of course, if I want to, if you wanna see the paper that it's looking at, this is uh, the PDF. Um, and again, it's just sort of reading all of the text of that. Now, if I open up a kind of new chat and I say something like write a Fibonacci uh, function in Python, again, it's got things like the support for code blocks, etc. So it all looks pretty beautiful. Same sort of experience. Now, don't get me wrong, this experience isn't as rich as something like Open Web UI, which obviously is a beautiful experience. But then at the same time, Open Web UI, 
you can literally just point to anything that is OpenAI compliant. And as I said, that server is OpenAI compliant. Um, so therefore you could just point OpenWebUI to it and it will work. But I think this is a pretty nice uh, experience. Now, of course, GPT OSS isn't a vision model. So if I want to go and talk to a model that has vision support, I can use something like the Quen3 very large model. So I'll just restart my Llama server one more time. And then this time, if I uh, go to localhost uh, 8033, you can now see I'm using a different model. I can still chat with it. I can still say hi and things like that. And then it's gonna come back and say, how can I assist you? But the difference here, I now have access to images. And then I ask it to describe uh, this image. Um, you are gonna see, it's gonna tell me that it is a unicorn, which we would expect. So it's picked up as a cute cartoon style unicorn. So the whole thing is multimodal, etc. And again, running super fast, 54 tokens per second, which I like. Now, if we wanted to, we could compare this to the Olama experience. So I'm gonna open up Olama's uh, web UI experience. And then I can say the exact same thing. So you see, I've got GPT OS S 20 B here, and I'm just gonna say something like, tell me a joke about cheese. Um, and then, you know, you can see the dot, dot, dot. This is pretty fast, but did you notice it just didn't feel quite as fast? Now we're gonna measure that in a second, but it, it just didn't feel quite as fast. So I'm gonna now say, tell me a long story about cheese. And again, this is not bad, it's thinking, it's it's pretty fast, but it's just not got that same zip as we saw a little bit earlier. So, you know, again, you've seen all the, the reasoning tokens there, but it's not quite running at that speed that we were seeing with Llama.CPP directly. So with this in mind, actually what I wanted to do is measure it. So what I am gonna do here is I'm gonna come back into the command line and then we're gonna run Olama in verbose mode and then I'm gonna run some benchmarking scripts as well uh, just to see how it runs. So, um, now the thing about Olama, I, I do think Olama's just got a better developer experience because I can do things like, oh, Llama list and I can see all of the models Models that I've got installed. So there's my GPT OS 20B. And then if I want to run a model, I can just do all llama run GPT OS S. Um, and again, I'm straight away, I can, it will load the model and I can chat with it uh, there. If I compare that to, you know, llama server minus HF and then da da da, you know, and then all of this here, it's just the user experience over llama is better. So I, if again, if I say, tell me a joke about cheese, um, it, you know, it's gonna uh, it's gonna do that. It just it just feels a little bit better there, but it is slower, right? So, and again, we can sort of measurably prove that. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna try and capture the uh, tokens per second, and that comes from verbose mode over Llama. So to get there, I'm gonna do a Llama run. And then I'm gonna put in GPT OSS, which is my model. And then I'm gonna pass in my prompt. So if I just say, tell me a long story about cheese, then rather than me being in interactive mode, that prompt is gonna get passed straight through. And then I'm gonna do dash dash verbose, and then that will give me the tokens per second. So if I run that here, and there it goes, came back. And, and as you can see there, if we look at the evaluation rate, you're seeing that it's pretty much coming back at 56 tokens per second. And you could feel it as it was coming back. It felt measurably slower than when running it with llama.cpp. So what we will now do is do the same thing, but we'll use llama CPP CLI and then capture its verbose mode and see how that performs. So to do that, I will just clear my screen. And so to do that, I'm just gonna clear my screen. And this time I'm gonna type in llama-cli minus hugging face. So again, I'm gonna use the 20 billion parameter GGUF file. And then I'm gonna say minus minus prompt, tell me a long story about cheese. And again, I want this in verbose mode. Now, again, this is far more technical in what's coming back um, than it would be when you're running Olama. And it's probably a lot more daunting for uh, regular users. But you can see it's, it's sort of chunking everything up, streaming it back and then we will get a tokens per second at the end of it. So if I just exit out of here, what I should be able to see is the breakdown of tokens per second. And then the key thing that you see here, there is 87.83 tokens per second, which correlates with what we saw in the UI. So basically llama.cpp is running one and a half times faster. And again, if I were to run the same thing here, but this time I take verbose mode out and just run it normally, um, again, 
you see it's coming back. It is noticeably faster than running with uh, Olama. You can see the speed of this coming back compared to what we were seeing with Olama. It feels one and a half times faster. It feels as if we're getting there a lot quicker. But as you see from the performance, it is actually one and a half times quicker. Now, as I said, I said we were gonna benchmark that. So to do that, I am gonna use a benchmarking script that I created. So um, basically it's in a project in my GitHub and it's um, called uh, Chuck LLM, so Chuck-LLM, it's in my repo, Chris Hay UK. Um, Chuck LLM is the library that I created that powers my MCP CLI tool. So basically it is a uh, model library. So it's kind of like Light LLM, but it allows you to connect to different LLM providers. Um, you know, so everything from kind of yeah, Kimi to uh, OpenAI to Anthropic, etc., and gives a consistent interface. So I added in Llama CPP as well as Olama on that, and I created a benchmark to see how much faster that is. So if I do UV run examples, um, and again, you can do this for yourself, uh, forward slash providers, there's a script called benchmark underscore Llama, Llama versus Llama CPP. So if we just run that now, you can see the first thing that's gonna happen is gonna discover your model. So it discovers the Llama models, finds 47 models. And then it's gonna benchmark all Llama. So we're using the Quen3 0.6 billion parameter model there. And then we're using the uh, the same model, and I'll tell you the trick in a second with Llama.cpp. Now, as you can see there, um, you know, in this case, it's saying 189 tokens per second for a Llama. And then, of course, the Llama CPP is running at 284, and that's basically one and a half times faster. So um, we know it's consistent. So the trick about this is, in this case, both Llama.cpp and the Llama are looking at the exact same GGUF file. And the way that I've done that is I've created a version in Chuck LLM where Chuck LLM can actually uh, discover all of the models in Olama, and then it will start a Llama CPP server, but actually point and use the GGUF in Olama. And that means that for this benchmark, we know it's a good benchmark because we're not downloading different versions of a GGUF, the two engines are using the exact same version. So therefore I know it's good. It's actually quite good for Chuck LLM as well because it also means that um, I'm not having to download my models in two different places. I can use Llama CPP or I can use Olama, but actually rather than downloading the Hugging Face version and having duplicate models, I can just point my Llama CPP server to talk to uh, my Olama directory and then I can use all of their models and again, if I clear the examples for a second, and then if I go to um, UV run examples providers and we do Llama CPP or Llama usage examples, you can see it's doing exactly that. It's a Llama CPP, but then it does this Llama bridge. And then you see it's discovered all of the Llama models. And, and again, we'll look at that, this in a second here, but you can see the path. So Olama models blob SHA-256. Uh, so if I just grab this path here, so if I just grab, uh, you know, um, uh, all the way up to dot Olama models blobs, and then I CD in there and we do an LS, you can see there are all of the models. And in fact, the very first one that we see there. So if we look for E1FA, you can see it's sort of uh, halfway down that list there. But that is effectively the GGUF files. So Olama takes the GGUF and munges it around a little bit, but underneath the hood, it's still GGUF. And that is why I'm able to, to bridge that. So at that point, it's just gonna therefore load up that specific model with uh, Llama CPP. Uh, so it just starts up a server and then I can ask it uh, questions and then <laughs> we're good to go. And then it will shut down the server. And again, it, it maintains all of the open AI compliance. And then if I wanted to, if I wanted to just ask directly, I could do a UVX. So you could do this yourself, chuck-llm ask. What is two plus two answer in one word? And then I can just pass in the provider. Of course, if I wanted to talk to OpenAI, I could change it to OpenAI. But in this case, I want to talk to Llama CPP. And then um, you're going to see it installs Chuck LLM. And then it's going to just do exactly what the uh, performance benchmark script did. Um, and it's going to go look up GPT OSS 20B. And then if it finds it in my Llama models, it'll run it. Or if it's in my hug and face, it'll run it from there as well. And again, similarly, if I wanted to, if I just switch this to Llama, um, you know, 
uh, then you are going to see that it will equally work against uh, Olama. And that's probably the nice thing about this is that it gives me consistency. So again, this is something I built to make MCPCLI a little bit faster and a little bit better, but it was nice to do that bridge because now I can have the power of all the old Llama models, but I can have the speed of the Llama CPP on MCPCLI, which is why I did that. So regardless, I think this is an interesting move from Llama.CPP. They've clearly moved away from just being a backend LLM inference engine and they're going off after the developer experience play. So by putting that web user interface in there in the first place, I just think it's an interesting move. And maybe it's because Olama is moving on to their own engine. Um, but I think regardless, it is really nice to have this super fast web UI and you can just play with the models. Obviously, it doesn't have the developer experience of all Llama. Maybe that will come in time. Um, but as I said, I do think it's an interesting move. And, and, and you're probably going to see that Llama CPP is probably always going to be the fastest engine because the guy, Gorgi uh, Gorgonov, is the person who created the GGF. Uh, file format in the first place and created Llama.CPP and who's really the originator of a lot of this. So um, regardless, if you haven't tried Llama CPP before, go check it out. I think it's really interesting. It's a little bit more kind of developer heavy as you saw there, um, but it is very, very fast. And again, um, maybe you can use the same techniques that I did. Um, um, again, you know, with Chuck LLM and, and MCPCLI is you can always point Llama CPP at your Llama model directory like I did, and then you're gonna be able to join the two together. So if you want that speed, uh, if you're running rather than necessarily hitting the Llama API directly, maybe you can then just use uh, a Llama CPP server like I did there. Anyway, I hope this video has been useful and I will catch you on the next one.